I guess I want to share a passion uh, about this area, which I've had for about six years. Being able to share that with people who have like-minded uh, ideas and have a research background or science background is just a huge advantage, I think. And this area has every single threat that we could think of for cetaceans in terms of what's listed. And the cetacean diversity is incredible, and you just don't get it anywhere else in Australia to our knowledge. So it deserves uh, at least a look in. So this is the foundation. This area of the Sapphire Coast down here at Eden is so productive with different species. A couple of years ago they had seven different sightings of seven different species in just one day. To find whales, uh, well, first of all you need to know where they're going to be and I guess you do that through migration patterns, you also can do that through productivity. Uh, here in, in Eden, it's one of those places where you can actually go along and find productivity in the current lines. You look for your signals such as your sea jellies, your, your fish boiling, your birds, sunfish, all those things. Along those edges, the current lines really do turn up some great species and uh, apart from the migratory ones, that's how we do it. Finding whales is really not an easy task. There's so much involved in finding whales in different parts of the world. Humpback whales, for instance, which is what we've been watching here in Eden for the last few days, are uh, relatively easy to find in that they produce a really large blow. Obviously uh, they, they produce a lot of uh, breaching and, and surface activity that we look for. So usually we need a fairly large boat. I mean for instance these last couple of days we've been going out, we've gone out to 33 miles offshore uh, to depths of over 2,000 metres uh, and we find that the whales sort of tend to congregate on, on, on different areas where there's high productivity of krill. So we've been watching them feeding, it's been very good. And when we're out there with the whales, there's so many things that you can collect data on. Um, I, for one, am very interested in their acoustics. And particularly in an area like this where they don't often feed outside the Antarctic waters, we're really interested in the sounds that they produce when they're feeding. So what we use is the underwater microphone called a hydrophone. And we put that in the water and we can listen using headphones as to what the whales are producing. Depending on how loud they are, we can tell whether it's a song being produced by a male offshore, whether they sound the grunts and groans that are being produced right here with these whales that we're interacting with. We can also collect data on photo ID of their tail. Each whale tail is individually distinctive with different nicks and marks and, and rake marks or teeth marks from say killer whales or other predators like sharks. So we take the photograph of that, the underside of the tail and we can catalogue those. So if there's a, a newborn calf with a female that we've identified her tail, we can then obviously know that that's a female. So over time we can work out associations with these animals. How's it feel when you have encounters like the last couple of days? Every single encounter is great because you can go out there and see nothing. So you just be thankful for what you see. Anything is a bonus really when you get out in the ocean and with wild animals particularly. So, um, you know, it makes me feel great. And to see other people enjoy it as much as I do is uh, just a bonus. Some of the encounters that we have out here watching the whales are absolutely incredible. For instance, one that we had just two days ago, there was a mother and her calf. The water was fairly flat, it was beautiful. And you can obviously see that the calf was really inquisitive and really interested in coming and having a look at us. It came, kept coming closer and closer and rolling over on his back, even able to sex the animal. It's quite incredible. And you could really see that he wanted to be a part of us on the boat. And we, being all the researchers and, and people interested in marine mammals out there, it's just an incredible experience even for us. And you could obviously see that he was really wanting to come and interact and play with us. He actually picked up his pet flip, flipper and, uh, and pushed it down the, the whole side of the boat. Of course we're all producing a lot of noise on the water and no doubt the whales are listening to us as well. So some of the encounters you can have out there are absolutely incredible. Yeah, pretty awesome experience yesterday. I mean, uh, we, uh, we get some close encounters up here at Eden with humpback whales, but to have this calf that obviously was really, really interested in, in us to engage uh, the boat the way it did was just awesome. I was up on the flybridge and looking down at the guys as the animal just tried to manoeuvre and get into the right position and all of a sudden a peck fin comes out and high fives the rest of the boat. It's just out of control. So it was a, a really amazing experience and um, something I certainly won't forget. Once in a million opportunity and experience just to get so close to just such big animals is insane and and the uh, the calf was very very interactive and and mum was just letting letting him her do do what she wanted to do and it was almost a reciprocal excitement um, just an amazing experience. This is an absolutely amazing place. We've had seen so many whales. Well, we've seen 100 plus just in the last two days. So many close encounters and lots of the calves and, and lots of feeding. We had two full-grown adults, uh, about 15, 16 metres, and a, uh, a calf. 
It was absolutely amazing experience. Uh, it rolled over on its side. It stayed with us for so long. It left and then uh, came back again. Um, just wanted to play with us. It was so close. Its eye just kept coming up, popping up, and looking at us. It was just fantastic. We've got some great shots of that. Yeah, yeah. It was um, seeing humpback whales is something I've always wanted to do, and to have those three whales so close to the boat and rolling over and clearly looking at us was just incredible. I was I was in tears, jumping up and down with excitement. Couldn't couldn't believe how lucky we were to have them so close to the boat. It was incredible. And just looking down and seeing the size of the mother's tail flukes, it was just incredible how enormous they were. I thought a few sightings and a couple hundred metres off the boat, maybe see a whale breach and never expected to have them floating you know, just a metre off the boat for around an hour. Like They just wouldn't leave us alone. I'm definitely hooked. So hopefully we'll be back here very soon. We had quite a lot of birds out there. Um, There's a number of albatross species. Um, including wanderers, the, the enormous albatross, and, uh, and thousands and thousands of um, Australasian gannet and uh, uh, short-tailed shearwaters and wedge-tailed shearwaters um, feeding on bait balls. And it was a really amazing uh, thing to watch with these huge numbers of birds all working uh, the bait balls along the coast. This weekend, without exception, was another great weekend. Good crew, really relaxed, and again some really unique experiences each time it proves to be something different and uh, for me this time I think the, the humpback whale encounter will be something that I'll never forget and um, once again it uh, invites me back to Eden and I'll be here again next month. Ah, the research. Well, you know, my aim for this, this whole area and to bring these people here is not so much to get results from yesterday or the day before, but to build something for the future. And, uh, you know, we can't protect what we don't understand, so let's do some baseline studies. As part of my research, I've worked on bottlenose dolphins for the last five and a half years, doing acoustics of those up in Jervis Bay, my main area, and up in Port Stephens. And we're hoping to continue this work down here in Eden and down in this area. There's so many abundant species down here that we can look at. My prime interest is looking for beaked whales, which is a very rare and elusive species. And we're very interested in that because they are impacted by underwater noise and, and disturbance, which is my main keen focus. So we're going to be down here collecting lots of data and lots of different species and hopefully gaining a lot of info more information on what we can find out here.